How did that teacher get fired for at your school? Male substitute teacher that taught regularly at my Catholic high school who wasn't fired, but banned from teaching in our female PE class after we reported him for repeatedly instructing us to stretch in positions that were sexual slash inappropriate. For example, he asked us to bend over with both hands against the wall and shake our hips back and forth and quat. Bonus, he subbed for my geography class the following year and during one of his classes I asked to go to the bathroom to take care of, my, feminine issue and quat. He asked me what kind of feminine issue specifically question mark and quat. I was too embarrassed to say it was my period so I said well, you know. To which he replied, yes, but I want to hear you say it out loud dot and quat. Creepy. We had a German language teacher at my high school. She was just so toxic and seemed to take pride in failing students. Eventually almost all students were complaining about her. Obviously admin will normally side with teachers since kids aren't always the most honest. Her husband also worked there so she had extra support at sticking around. I think after two years they finally fired her because no one wanted to be in her class. Her husband wasn't all that great either. I remember he'd fail your projects if you forgot to print a title page for assignments. Instant 50%. Middle school theater. She played massive favorites in a way that even made the favorites uncomfortable. So all the students hated her. However, all the adults, my parents and my friend's parents, at least, thought we were exaggerating because, you know, theater. I assume someone in the grade after mine got a responsible adult to listen, or the school got tired of her doing grease every single year. After she was fired she started a weird cult where she would speak to a spirit named Micah for people, so I feel pretty validated on the whole calling her crazy thing. OMG, this question is for me. None of these teachers were replaced. Once gone, we were all just given a passing grade. Freshman year high school, math teacher is a pedophile. Fired. Sophomore year, math teacher threw a dictionary at me for asking a question. Fired. Junior year, math teacher has a heart attack. FMLA for remainder of year. My poor senior year math teacher had no idea he'd be given so many dumb students who didn't learn first year math to last year math. He had to teach us from the beginning and work his way up. I commend and appreciate him so much. Good old public school education. They speak gibberish to drown out unwanted or embarrassing thoughts? I yelp, say random sentences, talk myself down. I'm odd and don't care to sacrifice my sanity for others' simple comfort. The intrusive thoughts are awful. To be clear, I did for years and it drove me crazy. Yes, also I run through lists of the names of that people I know who make me feel safe over and over, and lately I sing about my dog. PPL get really confused when they realize he's not their lol, but I'll work at home so it's just my partner and roommate and their stupid friends, or strangers when I'm out, so I don't care. Tried it for all my life. Then I realize these don't go away until you address them. They're still there, but because I've rationalized it, the explanation plays in my head right after the thought. Putting on ABBA's take a chance on me as my tried and true disruptor for unwanted thoughts. It's instantaneous, a critical hit to all intrusions. Even just singing it, there's no way to hear or sing that song without being transported to no thoughts, just vibes and dance moves. And quat. Like the title says, I often experience humiliating thoughts that seem unbearable until I drown them out either by swearing out loud or uttering strings of total nonsense. I've wondered if this is how Tourette's develops. It has to be some kind of neurosis anyway. When I was a kid I used to do sums on my fingers. Now I have a selection of random phrases, some not very polite, which I say aloud. My wife has heard a few and thinks I'm nuts, there are some I'm glad she's not heard though lol. Yes, I always say dude or, it or make a cringy noise. Hubs will be like, what? And I'm like nothing I'm just duding myself lol. For me, saying something out loud interrupts and distracts intrusive thoughts. I have been coping with intrusive thoughts for years and what really helps is having someone else's voice playing like a podcast or YouTube on the TV in the background or something that you can listen to other than your own thoughts. Does going bing bong, bam bam, and do count? Because that's my background music I make. I do the opposite. When my mind brings up embarrassing memories I say out loud to myself yes, I f backslash ed up and if I find myself in a similar situation I will do. And I list everything I can think that would get me better results. The intrusions stop when I've come up with a satisfactory solution. I think it's because I can then trust myself to handle the future and I feel prepared and confident in my choices hereforth. Seasoned married men, how do you tell your wife she can tea cook without offending her? I never understood why guys wait so long to bring up topics like this. There's no point in telling her now after years of marriage. Heck, after the engagement, it was already too late for corrections. If her cooking was trash, it should have been brought up during the dating stage. I'd let her know the first time I tried her cooking. At this point you just have to live with it. Faking that her food was good for years lamau. Dudes need to stop being afraid of their girl. Bad cooking ability equals slash equals girlfriend. It's probably not that she can't cook, it's more so the cultural difference. You should have made mention the difference in race in your post. Her unseasoned food is probably good to her people, while us black people won't enjoy that. If you really view it from that standpoint, it's easier to communicate the fact that we cook differently and you'd like to teach her how some of our meals are prepared. Ain't no offense in that. Especially if you also ask her to teach you how to make some Hispanic meals too. The best way to become a seasoned married man is to be able to communicate openly about things like that. It takes years of both partners learning to take their ego out of a situation and just be honest and work towards improving themselves and each other. But if that doesn't work out, 
Has she tasted her own food? Does she like it? If so, try to get a 3rd slash 4th slash 5th opinion. The more evidence you can gather to back up your theory, the less personal it will seem. However you also have to accept the possibility that they might say her food is fine and your tastes are the problem. To be honest, say nothing. But if I cooked something my wife slash girlfriend consistently didn't like she probably wouldn't hesitate voicing her concerns. I know I wouldn't like feeding my wife slash girlfriend something they hated but said they liked it to preserve my feelings. Like I am cooking you something to enjoy. Let me know if you don't like it, as a matter of fact, I wanna know. Your delivery is what matters the most though. I let her family do that for me. For example, beans. A couple of years ago, she cooked a pot of beans for some kind of family thing on her side. Her grandfather told her to never make beans again. It's not that she can't cook so much as she's apparently terrified of anything having flavor. In the example of the beans above, she tossed in a tiny pinch of salt, some pepper, and maybe two slices of bacon into a pot with a couple pounds of beans. They looked like beans, but tasted like nothing. They feel like a complete up? Totally, 100% all the time. 24 to 12 months ago yes, last 12 months, whatever the opposite of a complete up is. I'm 90% up. Got a few slivers of hope though. Wish me luck. I think everyone does at some point. Just gotta tough it out man. Don't ever compare your life to someone else. Just try to improve it. Or some bullshit like that. Hello, is it me you're looking for? 32 years old and every attempt I've made at getting ahead has failed. I have a broken shoulder and haven't been able to work all year because the surgeries keep failing. Feeling absolutely like a useless. Up. Yes. I invariably. Defeat from the jaws of victory. All my. Life. Autism with CPTSD, discovered at age 63, at least now I have an excuse. Not sure if I feel better or worse about being a, up after reading this in the comments. Unfortunately still yes. As much as I feel like a, up I know I'm not the worst out of my siblings. 46 year old and same, would like to hear more about what you feel got you here though. Yep, failure and shame of the family. No matter what I do it goes wrong or I get kicked while down and can't recover before something else happens. Yep, I'm 35, dead end job, overpaying on rent. Never been in a relationship, in a poting town, haven't been to a doctor in over a decade, losing myself to alcoholism and binge eating. I don't know what to do or where to go or even how to get out. What lie are you living or have lived? That I'm actually employed. Truth is I'm not and I'm draining my savings, I think I might be having another depressive episode but I'm just always unhappy with the jobs I have. Never thought I'd be at this point in my life at almost 29. I hide my computer and phone screen when he passes by. It doesn't matter what's on there, I don't even have anything to hide but it's just so deeply ingrained in me from growing up without any privacy. My brain is like oh no, I absolutely cannot be seen looking at this recipe for banana bread. He makes fun of me for it which is fair. The lie I'm currently living since August is that I'm employed and have a job. In the meantime I have been job searching, attending job fair, asking around. I have unfortunately had to result to this because since I live with my parents, they would make it a living. If they knew, legit everyone would find out, I would mostly likely be humiliated by people, and then my mental health would be at major risk. I wish it wasn't this way. I can't change the environment but I can protect my mental health and happiness. That I am happily married. I am planning on leaving my husband. I was going to wait for two more years but I can't. My depression is getting too difficult to handle. I can't pretend anymore. I'm contacting a lawyer and going to leave after Christmas. The kicker is I will lose my second job if I leave. I work full-time as an accountant outside the home and full-time for the trucking company that he works for. As soon as I leave I lose that job. They have been buddies for 20 plus years. I have only been doing the books for 9 years. After horrible luck with men my age, I dated an older man. He was a very nice guy, accommodating, actually listened when I spoke slash rarely tried to speak over me and did not once speak at me. At any rate, it was a good experience for me but the looks and whispers from other people got to be too much for me. After that, I knew how I wanted to be treated by a man. We are still on friendly terms and he understood when we parted ways. I haven't told me so for a couple reasons. The main one is that his BM's dad was with a woman close to our age and he had some not so nice things to say about it. It's also a conversation I don't know how to bring up. The one centimeter scar on my isn't from a cat scratch. I was shot with a taser at 16 after getting into a brawl with another student in religion class and ignoring the cops while I was speed walking to the office. Guy who did it was a rookie. I don't tell people the real reason because I'm not that person anymore and don't want others to look at me differently. 